This is how you set up your Covert AW1V or AW1A camera. For instructions on how to activate your camera for the Verizon network or the AT&T network, please visit the Covert website. All of the camera settings are controlled by a cloud platform, but it can also shoot pictures manually. To open the camera, hit the latch on the side, open it up, your batteries will be installed here. Once you have your batteries in place, make sure you install a micro SD card on the side of the camera. This camera will not function without an SD card. Turn the camera on, hit the switch on the left side, and close the camera. If light one is flashing red and a slow flash, that means the PIR is working. If it's a fast flash, that means the camera has low power. For light two, if there's a slow flash of green, that means it's searching for the signal. If it's steady green, that means the camera has a good signal. If light number two is a fast flash of green, that means your camera is sending pictures. If light two is steady at yellow green, that means your camera has a weak signal. If light two is steady red, that means your camera has no signal. The camera begins to monitor when the two lights are off. You can manually take a picture and check if your app has successfully received the photo. Press the RST button when the light two is green or yellow green. The cloud platform will receive the photo within 30 seconds. If light two becomes red after manually shooting, it means the picture did not send. We suggest checking this. The micro SD card's capacity is up to 32 gigabytes and that the camera has an active plan with Verizon. You can remotely control your camera via mobile phone or the web portal. To change the name of the camera, select there and change the name to what you want it to be. To change your description, hit the pencil tool there and type in what you want it to say. To check camera information, hit statistic and it will show you data usage, the total number of photos you have, firmware, location, SD card space, temperature and wind speed. Turn on or off notifications, select notifications, push on phone, to turn on SMS notifications, hit this, by turning on SMS notifications, every photo will be sent via text message. For email notifications, select right there. To turn off all notifications, make sure nothing is read. For billing plan and trouble notifications, select these arrows. To customize the camera settings, select camera mode. And from here, you can select each customizable setting. For mode, you have the option between picture and video. Red means that one is selected. To select photo size, select that. In this case, we have 20 megapixels selected. You have the option between 20, 16, 12, 8, 5, and 3 megapixels. To select your photo burst, hit there. Hit the drop down arrow, and you can select the number you want. When you find the one you want, hit done. Selecting one photo means there will be no photo burst, and it will take one photo each time. To adjust the shutter, you can select between a normal and a fast shutter. A faster shutter means less blur on your photo, while a normal shutter means that there is an opportunity for some motion blur. For a slow burst speed, make sure that's selected. For fast, select that. To go into trigger and time lapse, hit the arrow right there. To adjust your trigger mode, hit select. You have the options of a PIR trigger, which is heat and motion, time lapse, which takes photos at a selected interval, or the option of both. In this case, we have the PIR selected. To adjust your sensitivity, 
hit that. And you have the option between no sensitivity, low, normal, or high. We recommend normal for 10 to 80 degrees, low for low temperature, and high if it's above 80 degrees. For trigger interval, hit the drop down arrow. In this case, we have three. Hit done. And go back. And to select trigger interval unit, hit there. In our case, we have minutes. So with this selected, that means our trigger interval is set at three minutes. To do 30 seconds, you would go back, select 30, and then make sure you have seconds selected underneath that. Once you're satisfied with your trigger and time lapse settings, hit the back arrow to go back to the main menu. Lastly, we have our general settings. If you want to overwrite photos, select that on. This means that once your SD card is full, it will overwrite the oldest photos you have saved on the card. To use a timestamp on your photos, make sure that's selected. To adjust flash power, select this. You have the option between a low flash power or a high flash power. To set a maximum number of images per day, hit this setting. In our case, we have unlimited. To pick a number, you would scroll through the bottom until you find the number you like. If you want to adjust your remote control, you have the option between real time, a delay of a half hour, all the way up to a delay of 24 hours. To adjust work time, select there, and you have the option of selecting four different work times for your camera. To make a work time, hit on, and you have the option of adjusting all these different days, time, and start and stop. This will allow to make sure that your camera is on for certain times. If you want your camera on at all times taking pictures, make sure all the work times are turned off. Lastly, make sure when you change all your camera settings, you hit save settings at the bottom to make sure everything is saved to the camera. Once your settings are saved, your camera is now ready to use. Please keep in mind you can use the app at any time to adjust your camera settings. Please keep in mind that all your settings can be done on the web portal or your covert app.